Good morning. This is Mortality with me. And you may have heard in the news recently that life expectancy in the U.S. dropped by over a year, or under a year, or about a year, uh, in 2020, in the first half of 2020. And this is based off of a CDC report. Um, this is misleading in a certain way. That said, I'm going to explain it. Um, it is a meaningful drop in um, or in um, longevity. It's a meaningful increase in mortality. So um, let me take take a look at the report. You'll see that I've linked to it on Actuarial News. If you go to the mortality category on Actuarial News, you can get all the mortality news stories and research that you are interested in going back to the end of January. Um, in any case, uh, I, I have linked the CDC report there, and I've captured one of their graphs that shows that drop in life expectancy. And if you take it back, so I'll, I'll show this in the CNN article. So this is maybe the kind of article that you saw. Um, you had a full year in the first half of 2020. So the life expectancy for the entire population dropped to 77.8 years, which was the level it was, oops, sorry, boop, 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 back in 2006. Now, what does this mean? And I'm just going to go to the um, report itself. So this is a uh, vital statistics rapid release, provisional life expectancy estimates for January through June, 2020. And I want to show you something. Sorry, I have been reading this. Um, so these are based on provisional death counts. And no, I don't think that this is going to move a huge amount, maybe one decimal point. So 0 0.1 of a year when they have to recalculate when they have final death counts um, that said, at this point, there's not going to be a lot of extra deaths coming in from January to June uh, 2020. So they're basing this on these provisional uh, death counts. That's not an issue. Then they also have a provisional number of births. Again, I don't think that's going to be terribly undercounted, as well as you know um, estimates of the uh, population of various subgroups in the entire population. Okay, um, yeah, they they did use the 2010 census and projected to 2020 uh, using various things. That could be an issue, but I don't think that's really a big issue. Um, but here is the point. This life expectancy is using period death rates. And that means that we are assuming we're calculating a life expectancy assuming the mortality experience that was seen January through June 2020 was experienced throughout a single person's life from birth to whenever they die. Um, that's what's called a period life table, or it's I call it a calendar year mortality table. Now, and you can say how with a half a year. I will be writing a post later about how you do that. Um, that little detail does not matter. It doesn't make a big difference. But the issue is, of course, nobody actually ever experiences, you know, oh, we're going to have just the 2020 mortality for your entire life, except for infant mortality. And that's the only group. Um, and at this point, infant mortality is so low compared historically. Um, it's a very, very small percentage of the population that sees the actual period mortality as what is called their cohort mortality. The cohort mortality is the mor mortality uh, that's really relevant to you as an individual if you're trying to plan out retirement, for example, um, and, uh, you know, in survivorship, uh, life insurance purposes, and that kind of thing. Um, that said, this is a real measure. Here is the issue with it. What this is trying to capture is how mortality changed between two different periods. And there are two different numbers you can use for this. One is life expectancy, and then the other is age-adjusted death rate. Um, so life expectancy, again, it's like doing it an expected value if you know probability. 
but using that mortality table to project a life just assuming every year of their life, they're seeing the same mortality table, okay? So we're really trying to capture all of the different changes. So if we look at the mortality table for period 2019, and then the mortality table for period first half of 2020, we are capturing all sorts of movement in mortality. In my own estimates, when I was already doing it through the first half of 2020, I saw that uh, there were a lot of excess deaths for those over age 45, and it differed by age group, but under age 45, there was almost no effect. So that is one reason life expectancy can go down, is you have huge swaths of ages with worse mortality. Um, I, I'm going to point something out to you in this uh and I will, I will be doing a post on this later, get into a lot of more detail. Um, so I'm just trying to hone in on this so if you can see the changes. I do like how they start the graph at zero and then put the broken axis in for their vertical. And let me show you that. So zero and then it jumps to 70. I don't have an issue with this. It's because you can barely see the changes. It's like a 4% change or so. Um, 3% change. Actually, I'll have to take a look. Um, it is a very noticeable drop. And when they get to the whole year, it, it's still going to be very noticeable. And yeah, you go back to 2006, and that's about the same level, definitely for the overall um, population. But what's a little bit difficult to see, because it's not such a drastic change, is that for several years in here, we have life expectancy decreasing compared to the prior year. And this was a big deal. If you actually dug into the numbers, you would see there was specific age groups contributing to that worse life expectancy. And it tended to be middle-aged people and some young people, basically drug overdoses increasing. Um, and younger people dying more will have a bigger effect on that overall population period life expectancy than say older people dying more. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when we're doing these interpretations. So one thing I want, you know, to give you a little bit of perspective, um, I'll link to this post. I wrote this a few years back where I made a comparison between cohort life expectancy. So that's the one that you would want to actually use if you were, um, trying to plan for retirement, say. And that is the mortality experience for your cohort. That means everyone was born that year. Um, and Social Security, of course, has this information for the general U.S. population. Um, this is also for the period life expectancy. Now, the cohort life expectancy has been greater than the period life expectancy, going back to at least 1900, but, you know, several years before that, because mortality has been improving. Um, that means you check the mortality table that was experienced, the period or calendar year mortality for the year you were born is going to be much higher mortality than what you're going to see over your life because it gets better over your life in general. Okay, so what I wanted to point out to you was this spike in the graph, and you know what year that is. And what was funny is for the longest time, I for always forgot when the Spanish flu pandemic was. And when you start looking at historical mortality tables, it's hard to miss. What happened is the period life expectancy dropped about 10 years between 1917 and 1918. Uh, now, the thing is, of course, uh, those who were born in 1918, and actually it really did not contribute to, contribute to infant mortality at all. Um, so they actually saw vastly improving mortality over their lifetimes. And they had a, you know, a normal uh, mortality curve, you know, so they didn't have any kind of gross increase in mortality uh, for, for that age group, the zero, you know, age zero in 1918. Um, so you're going to see a spike when we get, you know, the, the cohort versus the period 
tables for 2020, we're going to see another spike um, with the vaccines. Like even if COVID has a lingering effect, just like flu and pneumonia, and maybe it becomes a seasonal disease, and maybe it'll be slightly worse mortality for say 2022 and going forward compared to say 2015, uh, mainly for the elderly, it, it, we're still going to see a spike um, because it's it's the life period life expectancy is definitely going to be a drop for 2020, probably going to stay low for 2021, but maybe better than 2020. And then I'm expecting for 2022 uh, to be a lot closer to the mortality that um, we were seeing before. Uh, I don't know. And of course, this could become the great age of pandemics, but you know, you never know. Um, in any case, I'll be doing a post on, you know, really digging into this analysis they did because they showed differences by sex, by race. Um, and then we saw that table by age. And I'm going to see if I can get the table for 2019 so that we can do a head to head comparison. Uh, that takes a lot more time than, uh, you know, just talking to you on video. Uh, in any case, as I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, video, if you're interested in mortality trends, you know, please start watching actuarial news uh, with this mortality uh, category. And it, you might find some interesting stuff. It is because this is really my area. Morta I'm a life actuary, so mortality is my bag. Um, there will be a mix of kind of academic papers. So let me just scroll down. Yes, it's a lot of the nursing home stuff. So here, this assessing mortality and inequality in the U.S. This is a this is a preprint. That's an academic paper. But I also have um, you know regular news stories. Yeah, this is definitely um, academic. So I'll have some academic papers in there. But I also have like news stories, press releases from those looking at. Yeah, so here's one. Um, a news story about the nursing home mortality in New York. And yeah, I will have more to say about that, obviously. Um, in any case, have some fun. <laughs> mortality, it's going to get better, guys. So uh, see y'all another time. Bye-bye.